So you go to the store and buy something very expensive. It's fun. It's shiny. It's exciting. It gives you a rush of dopamine. A few days later, the novelty has worn off and the cold reality is that you've just spent £200 dollars on something you didn't even need and now you can't pay the rent. Feelings of guilt, regrets and that you have made a huge mistake plague your every thought. That, my friends, is buyer's remorse. And it's also dumper's remorse. It's essentially the same thing. The dumper breaks up with you and in their head at that particular moment in time, they never want to see you again. But days, weeks or even months later, they realize that life isn't that great without you in it. The new shiny toy syndrome has worn off and now they realize that things were better the way they were. Staying in no contact will likely amplify this for the dumper. It could potentially trigger your ex into thinking that you don't or didn't care about the relationship as much as they did, even though they were the ones that asked you to leave and broke things off with you. How ironic is that? Welcome back to the Love Fix, guys. It's Nick, as always, compassionately giving you no BS advice so you can get through your breakups as healthily and as easily as possible. If today's video isn't enough for you and you need my help with your personal breakup situation, you can drop me an email at thelovefix20 at gmail.com and we can set up a one-to-one -one voice coaching session and get you on the road to breakup recovery. Help a small channel out by hitting the like and subscribe. And if there's any future videos you'd like me to tackle, leave your comments below. Before we go any further, guys, I still have COVID-19. It's been pretty rough. So if you haven't had the vaccines, I would strongly recommend that you do because I probably would have been in far worse condition or even possibly in the hospital. Trust me, guys, you don't want no part of this. So let's get into it. These are the five stages of a dumper's remorse. Stage one is essentially the dumper being 1000% certain that they have made the right choice. At this point, you're maintaining no contact because that's what they have asked for by leaving you. But the dumper thinks that the dumpy is just angry and the lack of contact from the dumpy is just a reaction to them leaving. At this point, the dumper is resolute and will stick to their guns to validate their decision to split up with you. So they can essentially, quote unquote, win the breakup. Dun, dun, dun. They are going to stick to their guns no matter what. Your response to their stubbornness is one of maturity and from a position of strength. That is respect their wishes and give them what they've asked for, which is the breakup. Their self-projection at this point is that you are so angry, hurt, bitter, jealous, and so on, that you're just showing off by not reaching out to them. Let's just take one second to digest that. The dumper walked out of your life, then expects you, the dumpy, to reach out. That's like someone crashing into your car, not apologizing for it, and then expecting you to pay for the damages. Not today, Satan. Stage two, the dumper is like, they will contact me. They will calm down. After all, they think the world of me. They didn't want this breakup. It was their fault I dumped them anyway. I'm in the right here. And guys, while it may be true that you did some things your ex found to be unattractive to facilitate this breakup, they likely had a role to play as well. It takes two people to get together and it takes two people to break up barring any kind of abuse. They ended the relationship, they walked out, so they have to walk back in and initiate contact with you. The dumper is very much trying to validate and rationalize their decision. They are also trying to rationalize your reaction to them at this point, which has been one of silence. It's around about this time the dumper's inner voice starts speaking to them. Hey, don't worry. Once they miss you enough, they'll reach out. They didn't want the breakup. Just remember that. They will call you. Uh, no. You know what? I actually feel sorry for dumpers sometimes because 
if you, the dumpy, are putting no contact into place, they will start doing the mental gymnastics that spike their anxiety. However, at this point, they're still sticking to their guns and reminding themselves of all the reasons why they dumped you. Guys, if you haven't seen my video on if I leave my ex alone, will they miss me? Pause it here, go check it out and come back, or you can wait to the end of the video and check it out. It will be appearing on your screen about now in the top right hand corner. Stage three, enter the anger and protection phase. Their fragile little ego is taking a beating from your silence and your indifference to them dumping you. The ironic and contradictory thing of most dumpers is that they tell you to exit their life and to leave them alone. But somewhere deep down, they want to be chased by you because this further validates their decision to leave. But if you treat them like a celebrity, they will only ever treat you like a fan. I have often speculated what the dumpers monologue would be around this time. And I think it goes something like this inside their heads. How dare they not contact me? Bastard. If we were still together, I would dump them for respecting my wishes to leave me alone. I secretly want them to validate my decision to leave, so why aren't they contacting to boost my ego? Did I mean nothing to them? I at least thought they would check in. Maybe I could contact them. No, absolutely not. I won't risk getting rejected. Please forgive the poor voice acting there. I've been drugged up and locked indoors for five days and I think I've gone a bit mental. Swiftly moving on. I have news for you dumpers. There are consequences to your actions. Being on your own means exactly that. You no longer have access on any level to the dumpy. Enjoy and have fun with that. Essentially, the dumper is not getting their way at this point. Their anxiety is spiking and they start shitting all over the floor. And do you know who else shits all over the floor? Three-year-olds and dogs. So, if someone hasn't literally got their shit together, this is the kind of thing that's going to happen. Stage four, enter the dumper's fear and regrets. The dumper's inner voice starts to speak to them again. Only this time, the volume is turned up to 200%. Holy crap, they're moving on already. How are they handling this so well without me? I dumped them. They're the ones that should be hurt, not me. This is where the dumper begins to doubt their decision and where their ego is at the most fragile. As I said earlier, their decision has consequences. They get nostalgic and start remembering the good things about you, as opposed to stages one to three where they force themselves to focus on the negatives regarding your relationship. This is so they can validate their decision. They may even think you started today because through the grapevine, they've heard that you're doing okay and you're living life without them. Stage five, I want a refund. I want to return my ridiculous purchase to the store and get my 200 pounds dollars back. I need to pay rent. I need to pay bills. In fact, I'd be happier with the money. I don't need this shiny new thing anymore. In other words, Single life or the rebound isn't as great as the dumper thought it would be. You, the dumpy, still haven't contacted them, which effectively removes their safety nets. They no longer feel safe or secure anymore because they believed you would reach out. Guys, your ex requested freedom from you. Give them all the freedom they can handle because absolute freedom on its own means absolutely nothing after a while. We ultimately want to share our lives with someone. Before that happens, we will likely go through many breakups and experience a lot of pain. From that pain, we learn, we adapt, we improve, and we find someone on our level. In other words, both you and your partner have to have their shit together before things can work out for the long term. Give them the gift of mystery. Give them the gift of your silence and your indifference. The last time they saw you or heard from you was likely during the breakup talk and at that point you were showing interest and you wanted to save the relationship. 
This, in a strange way, validates them and puts them on a very high pedestal. Now, after a period of silence and no contact from you, you now appear that you're doing great and that you're okay with or without them. That is what will drive their remorse and anxiety up to 200%. Sometimes we have to let people experience what they think they wanted so they can discover they never wanted it in the first place. The only way to do that is to give them the breakup, respect their decision and let them discover things on their own. To all the wonderful people of this channel and community, I will leave you with this last piece of advice. There are stubborn people in the world and there are people who are just too scared to try and get things back. They will sooner live with regret for the rest of their lives before risking rejection themselves. Before you take that as validation to reach out to your ex, I want you to consider this. Do you really want to be with someone who is too scared or too stubborn to admit that they miss you, they made a mistake and they regret losing you? What does that say about you and your self-worth if you're willing to chase someone like that? This is not a judgment on you. And guys, I've been there many times years ago. It's merely me challenging you to go after something better, to level up. They walked out. That means they have to come and get you back. Especially if you said to them, if you change your mind, you let me know. This is not to be used as a weapon or manipulation, guys. If you reach out or if they reach out for a reconciliation and that's what you want, meet up, have fun, reconnect, remind each other of the chemistry between you two. If all goes well over the first few dates, discuss how you can both do better going forward. Set your boundaries, set your values and meet somewhere in the middle. Maybe you didn't have boundaries, maybe either of you didn't have boundaries before, but even if you do set boundaries, you have to negotiate and you have to be adaptable and you have to compromise. Relationships are about working together, not against each other, because if you start working against each other, it becomes you versus me rather than us versus the problem. Before you click off, check out my video on my stubborn ex, the dumper's mindset. It will be appearing on your screen in the top right corner about now. Until next time, I'll see you on the other side.